Well, this is really exciting. So thanks so much for listening to Blue Sky Radio. Today is the 25th of October. And uh, this is Radio Waterloo. You can find us at radiowaterloo.ca. We are a nonprofit organization here in Kitchener and Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. You can find us at 102.7 FM. And I'm really proud to announce that today Jar is back with us. And Jar is a horseman and he's a former Motown singer. And it is really amazing to have him back. He's very caring human being who focuses on children and youth via horses. So thank you so much, Jar, for coming back with us today. Oh, Yeti, thank you so very much for having me back. And uh, I'd like to uh, say good morning. Uh, I'm having a cup of coffee as we go through the program this morning. To Canada, to uh, a lot of the people that I know there and love and that have been supporting me in, in uh, the music world and in my equestrian world. And I'd like to thank you and Blue Sky uh, Radio again for the opportunity to speak to some of those fans and some of the people that may not know uh, the kind of work that I'm trying to do for us, for we, that love horses, for the love of the horse. That's right. So could you please introduce yourself a little bit to the listeners? Uh, some people may not have heard of you, other people's are, people are more familiar, but would you give a brief introduction of yourself? Okay, I've uh, been in the music business, uh, turned pro at 13, uh, young, started off in jazz, and uh, my great-grandfather put me on a horse at the age of three, so uh, my experience and love for the horse came before me, even my music. And uh, I've grown up in my life to be 76 years old, um, enjoying both of those things uh, that has uh, made me enjoy being on this planet, what we know, much peace and happiness. And I'm trying to go out of here when the Great Spirit decides to take me on that journey, uh, supporting and bringing back the respect and love that we should have for children, youth, and the horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a really unique voice and it's really nice to hear somebody with the kind of passion that you have and very organized thinking also and uh, you got so much on the go. Um, and I wanted to hear a little bit about, because I know you have said that horses saved you. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, you, you, you kind of like get lost in trying to uh, experience your life journey and stay positive and believe in it. A lot of people uh, sometimes quit on it. Um, being my age, there were times that I maybe thought that I didn't want to be here. But the Great Spirit kept me strong. And uh, one of the things when I got into rock and roll and I was out there touring with the Jacksons, Michael Jackson and, and the Tops and, and Three Dog Night Chicago, it's just going. Uh, Mom's made me red box. I mean, I've had the luck to have opened and performed and worked with multiple uh, talents, Teddy Pendergrass, Lou Rawls. You get caught up in sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I know that the audience out there should be with Janet Joplin and Elvis and Michael Jackson, Prince, on kind of like losing yourself and um, kind of like grabbing the dependency of drugs and, and uh, one of the worst drugs on the planet, which I still enjoy, which is a glass of wine and booze, but in moderation. And uh, I kind of like lost myself. So uh, all along and through my journey in the music and rock and roll, I always went back and rode horses. Uh, I found myself in California, um, really down, really depressed. And uh, I went out and found a place to ride a horse. I had just gotten married and, and I had a kid, but I was still a little bit down from the rock and roll and the, just being a little bit crazy out there, making a lot of money and, and being a celebrity. And uh, I decided to go back and buy a horse. I've been riding on, I never stopped. But that changed my life. So along with keeping riding in my life and then deciding to buy a horse, it stopped me in my tracks and having a son. So the horse brought me back to my responsibility is trying to be a, a decent human being, a great father, hopefully. And uh, my journey from that point on has brought me much peace and happiness. And this is why I'm trying to give back to the kids, the future of mankind, and the future of horsemen of mankind, the 21st century horsemen, the 21st century horse. Mm -hmm. 
And we're going to get more to that um, a little later. You talking about the 21st century horse horsemen and the horse and horse women. But um, regarding your uh, PYI project Arrowhead, uh, that is really exciting work that you're doing. How did you get started with that? And could you describe a bit about what that is? Yes, that is PY1. It started off with, um, again, my being in the entertainment industry, and uh, the plan got hit with a disease called AIDS. And in that, in the entertainment industry, and you know, in the entertainment industry alone, I've known so many people. I lost 42 friends to AIDS. So I decided to uh, write a song and uh, to talk about that to the planet, about safe sex or no sex. It's great sex is, but not worth dying for. And when I filed for a 501c3, which in America is a tax exempt status as a charity, I put it under the program of education. When we put that under the program of education, we took on educating youth about staying in school, staying off a drug, and realizing that just like the person that says on the street, uh, don't get in someone's car, don't trust a stranger, uh, don't trust anyone that touches you in the wrong place <clears throat> or approaches you in the wrong way. And that started, that, car, that program was PY1. We started Project Arrowhead under the educational side of that 501c3. That is now a 501, that is a five-star charity in the United States. It is, it's it carried me around the world. Um, it brought me in contact with the Princess, uh, the charity for the World Children's Charity, which is uh, Princess Di and uh, um, the Duchess of York, Fergie. Uh, and uh, I've used the horse and that charity to raise money internationally through riding professional marathons for Project Arrowhead. And I've come home and we are working continuously every year to try and build that charity as an idea for the United States that we can take a ride back to nature, we can introduce kids to riding entry level and make sure we ensure that we always have a 21st century horse and those in the 21st century that love and respect horses. Mm -hmm. You have a really good connection to kids. Uh, as I was researching your name on the internet, a lot of videos come up about your work and it's really nice to see uh, how gentle you are and kids listen to you and horses are a very natural instrument too uh, and you know creating trust and and uh, respect but you know that you're really awesome it's really great to see and we've been sharing some of your links as well and anybody that's listening you should definitely uh, watch these videos and it's something that more people can get involved with where, wherever you live think about horses as teachers and you know, get involved in community stables and things like that. I think that's a beautiful idea. My approach started with Project Arrowhead as understanding that in my life, the teaching, the journey I've taken, I had to find people I trust, sensates, that could teach me the skills that I would have that I could grow on. And so with children, first got to gain their trust. And if you gain their trust, then they'll listen to you and you can get them to apply themselves, which is need to apply effort to learning and practicing the skills that you're trying to teach them, whatever those skills are, uh, to get them uh, to understand that life is a journey. And then to understand in that journey that time waits for no one. We all have to be very aware and respect the time that it takes for our lives to, to grow and, and, and to move on in that life journey. So the next word is patience. So I use TEP as a way to work with kids. Trust, effort, and patience. It is the foundation of my philosophy with these children. And in the videos, uh, and in the film that I'm very proud of, uh, that a filmmaker uh, came to me and wanted to do a 15 minute piece on me and decided to do a whole film on me. It's called Jaw Journey of a Horse. And uh, some of the networks in Washington, D.C. saw the end of the story, which was based on Project Arrowhead and did a infomercial on it. And it is now entered in the Actors Film Festival uh, that has been built by Lisa Dryson. And uh, I think uh, the people who have horses and love horses, this is a way for us to get back. This is a way for us to work with youth. We're seeing a world problem with kids. We're seeing in the country here alone in the United States that it is somehow becoming a policy to take children 
for whatever reason from their parents. So I think that we can gain the trust of the kids. Kids love animals. And uh, I think for me and in my feeling, the animal is done most for mankind. So, so I'm trying to bring them both together to save and heal each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've watched your documentary and it's really applicable to a lot of people who have experienced any kind of violence uh, or alcohol in their uh, growing up uh, in your uh, you know family home. Um, and I mean, your experience is always obviously very different because you also be became uh, very well known, well, a celebrity really. And uh, it's really amazing how you're given back and you're an inspiration to many others. So Brian Barber is uh, the person who created the documentary and you were mentioning that it's been received really well. Uh, what are you hoping, what are your next steps regarding that? Well, Brian Barber, uh put together a company called c and Productions. And he won the President's Award for filmmaking. And uh, he found out about me because I do work in, in schools as well. Uh, the Broadcasting Institute of Maryland, I go down there with a friend of mine and I lecture the kids on how to stay strong and believe in their careers and, and uh, if they're going to really be serious about reaching their goals and that how to look at the work and how to look at the communication and working together. And so when he heard about my story, he wanted to do a story on a Merlin Horseman, mainly because Merlin is the second leg of the Triple Crown, the Preakness. So uh, the, uh, the school and, and the gentleman uh, uh, that is, uh, I was sitting in for was John Carrington. And uh, John told us, I got a horseman for you. And uh, he says, here's the phone number, call him. He came and we sat down and we talked. That was four and a half years ago. So that film has won seven film festivals across the United States. Uh, one I'm most proud of is the Equus Film Festival, again, that Lisa Drives has put together for us to have horses to tell our story. Uh, I, I just simply would like to say thank you to those people and hopefully we are working on getting the film in Canada to premiere there and use it as a fundraiser for some of the programs for our horses and kids. And it's called John Journey of Old Westman. And he was quite a young man, quite a filmmaker. I'm very proud that the work he has done. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully we get to see it in Canada soon. Um, it's very broad based as well. I mean, I've watched it a few times. And uh, you can always find something new in there. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about the endurance racing, and this brings up the question about what is your hope for the 21st century horse and horsemen and women? Well, I mean, you know, I've been riding since I've been, uh, I got introduced to the horse at three. So, uh, along with that, I also participated in growing up in a lot of sports. And it took a little while for me to really realize that, you know, horsemen. Athletes and riding is a sport, and I've looked at the growth of volleyball and tennis and uh, the National Football League, golf, and on how they take amateur uh, programs to develop professional sports that these kids can come up with in school and all in many other ways, and then make that their job and make that a way to, to make a living. And um, the horse industry that made the most money was celebrated horse racing around the world. It paid the most money. Right now, we, we have a, a, a lottery in the United States that one man just won a billion dollars for buying a $2 ticket. So a lot of the sport and a lot of the stuff that have gone down has really affected the ability for, sorry, it's a guy weighing 113 pounds and go get on a horse and run around a track and become a millionaire. There's no other sport out there for riding that you can do that. So when I go to the Middle East and fortunately have gone to other countries, I do sport riding. And most of those sport ridings that I participate in 26 mile marathon, set up like the Boston Marathon, the New York Marathon, the Bicycle Marathons, that these athletes are making money. And I would like to see the horse industry understand that having a horse is an expensive proposition. And that we need to not just get trophies and ribbons, we need to get paid. So one of the biggest egos out there is who's got the 
most beautiful horse, uh, the horse that uh, simply based on Justin Morgan's The Morgan, the horse that can pull, uh, be a, a driving horse, be a farming horse, be a riding horse, and also uh, be an endurance horse. So the number one horse sport horse is the Arabian horse. And in Canada and in America, the horses that are challenging that clown are the Mustang, the true horse of America, and I really think the true horse of Canada. So I would like to see a sport professional. And uh, let me tell you about the kind of money. A hundred mile ride in endurance for the Martin brothers in Dubai and Abu Dhabi when I was over there paid five million dollars. Invitational ride. The ride that I did with the Duchess of York for the World Children's Charity in Qatar paid five hundred thousand uh, dollars first prize for a twenty six mile marathon. And it's all supported and backed by the World uh, Veterinarian Association to make sure that we don't hurt these horses. That we pull these horses out when they, they come into the vet shop. So it's, it's worth exploring. And for me, as a horseman, and, and as I see it, it is the fastest growing sport coming up in the equine industry. I would like to see it turn around and cost me $65,000 to do the Great Santa Fe Trail horse race six years ago from Santa Fe, New Mexico to Independence Camp. It was supposed to pay $100,000. They took the money out two weeks before we got there to do the ride. So uh, I don't know why. I know uh, I do pretty well, and I'm a pretty well off uh, man. But uh, for the work that I do with horses and for the many people that I see riding, they all are looking forward to something coming up where the equine energy we create saving itself. Mm -hmm. Put the horse to work. He took his job. So the horse can save itself. And in saving itself, we can put the school together that we can make kids, not only female riders, because we're losing the male rider, to come back and be excited about getting on a sport and getting on a horse. Uh, that's about riding back into God's country, exploring this planet again when it looks back. That's a really good idea. And you mentioned something before when you and I talked about the, uh, the trails that are available to people across the United States, for example, that you can really literally ride from coast to coast. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Well, there are many trails that they are connecting. You know, you still have to, the great trails of America were like the Santa Fe Trail, the Chicken Trail, the ride that I did, the 800 mile ride, which really broke down to being 500 and some miles. And it was written about, thank you, one of your Canadians, uh, Judy uh, McLeod, I mean, McLeod, and her husband, Kim McLeod, who was a great photographer with horses, I think they are married, uh, did a piece on that ride. And, um, uh, Two states came together because of tourism and real estate to put on a ride that would attract the horsemen to their state. The Postal Service joined in the United States Postal Service representing the Pony Express riders, the mail carrier uh, that was the mail before we had the, uh, um, the mail systems that we have today. And uh, people came from all over the world. I got, you know, I get to meet some of the top riders in the world just because I do sport riding. And, and the people that came from across America and around the world to do that ride was an incredible experience um, for the love of the horse and, uh, and the sharing of ideas on where we can, what we can do to save these animals and gain more respect for these animals. And to introduce entry level, which is the most important thing in horsemanship, is to keep introducing children to the horse. Because we're all on our way out we ride. We gotta make sure that the future kid and the future, uh, 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 that humanity's future includes the horse. And that means we've gotta introduce it to the horse. And we gotta give them a reason to want a horse, to buy a horse, to love a horse, to need a horse, and to want to keep riding as long as they can ride in their lives. Yeah, definitely. I think it's an amazing idea. And it's nice too, to hear or think about horses returning to nature because that's really where they belong. That's where they are the happiest and where they thrive. And people too could really use nature as a bit of a stress reliever. So, and, and even keeping nature as it is, as opposed to developing every last part of, uh, you know, untouched land. Well, you know, it's kind of like, um, my heritage is my father, Blackfoot. Well, he's gone now, was Blackfoot. 
French, and African American. My mother was Cherokee, Irish, African American. What a combination. Some people call me the Iron 57 kid. But uh, that standing coming up kept me a lot in the nature on the horse. And um, I came and did a ride in Canada through Robert Boto on the film work that I did with him and, and uh, Paul Kemp, uh, Summerway uh, Productions for the Pet Channel. Um, there's a film out now that you can check out that was done uh, in Canada. Uh, Albert Boto is one of the top filmmakers in the business. And he introduced me to a nation which is like the, um, in northern Canada, you know, called the Hennigratini Nation. I met a gentleman up there, a great horseman, he rode with him in the Hennigratini Nation. His name was John Tennant. And uh, hooked up with Randy Bird, one of your top horsemen up there, who were trying to save the last of the wild horses, and a great horseman uh, unto himself. But I'd really like to thank uh, the Pet Channel, Summerway Productions, and Alan Botha for bringing me to Canada Canada, not for music this time, which I, the first time I went there was for music, but for the love of the horse and to introduce us to maybe some ideas and some ways that we can save uh, the last of these indigenous horses. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so nice when people are collaborating for with something. That's really the way to go about it. Uh, and people are coming outside of themselves and, you know, bringing more people together. And that's really the way to save horses. I mean, the industry itself, that is a slaughter industry. And, you know, you, every day you read about wild horses being rounded up and they, some of them disappear after slaughter. Like, there's so much cruelty going on. And uh, like you mentioned about giving the horse a job again, you know, we need to give horses a job so that they are needed. You know, the other bit about mental health in horses is another bit, and that's kind of what you're doing with your project Arrowhead, obviously. Um, so there's so much potential here. Well, the horse is a medicine in the Native American world around the world. The horse was a gift from the great spirit, and it carried us. Not only did it carry us, it, it, it provided us means of transportation, hunting. Uh, some people even ate them. So, I mean, I, there are many, many options uh, that people don't like to look at. But the horse has been one of the greatest gifts to mankind on this planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put him out of work. We built tractors, airplanes, and trains, and cars, and based everything on horsepower. So the new horse is the car. Airplanes, jets, we're on our way to the moon and the Mars. Horsepower, but we've forgotten the horse. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that I, I, I kind of look at is I'm a great automobile lover too. And one of the great cars that I fell in love with is the Mustang. Now look at the amount of love and respect and endurance and the greatness of that car has gained with the name of Mustang. And I wonder sometimes why they are not more involved into helping to bring systems that will support the horse backed by uh, an industry that big that uses the name of these incredible animals to promote itself to be number one in a car in the world of automobiles. So uh, those are some of the people I'm trying to reach out to and contact and say, hey, come on, you've used the name, how about uh, we put them out of work, how about we put them back to work? And there are ways that we sit down and we talk about it like the Congress of this country needs to sit down and do on both parties about the weakness of us all. Not the meekness of us all, not the me and you, but the we and us. It's a we thing living life for us all. We are only a species, another species on this planet. And we've got to look at that we can do a lot better job on caring about we as a species and us as a species, rather than you as a part of that species and I. I know, and what you're saying rings so true, especially today. It seems like every day there's a bit more news about something negative that's happened and uh, how, you know, we're supposed to look at each other and be afraid of each other and we're supposed to judge each other and uh, be very protective of ourselves and, you know, like n this nation and that nation as opposed to embracing each other's diversity and welcoming somebody. Uh, so what you're saying is just... Uh, you know, we love hearing it. Thank you so much for all your passion. Um, can't wait to see what else is coming. Well, you know, I've got a new album coming out. Oh. And, uh, I, look, 
I look at all this stuff that is going on with humanity and, and not respecting our diversity and our differences. And I look at it in the horse industry, which is an incredible, I love this industry. But you know, we do that same thing in the horse industry. A horse is a horse, of course, instead. And if we love horses, we should love horses, not just because they're classical horses or, the, or they're riding, doing horses or farm horses. If you love horses, you love horses. You need to respect them all. If you love being alive and you love being a human being, then you should respect that every human being wants the same thing that you want. They want to have a home, raise their kids, and have a good life. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think on multiple levels in those things, the whole industry can come together to be one. One, we are powerful. We have a lot of problems in the horse industry where everybody thinks that they're horse and their way of riding and their disciplines and their food ideas and what they do with horses is better than the others. We need to come together and say we all need to talk about that because if we come together, we can stop this slaughter. We can stop this, this disrespect for these animals. And we can create a, a, a journey. We rode away from this planet on horses. We can start to take a ride back to this planet and Mother Earth through horses. That sounds amazing. It really does. Um, you mentioned you had a poem. Well, you, you mentioned that you're writing a book, first of all, so that's really awesome. Did you want to talk about your book a bit? Yeah, it's, a, it's you know, when you're a songwriter, you uh, multiple songwriters, we all like music. Um, music instrumentals are great for them all, but then sometimes people sit down and get an idea with some lyrics. And it takes lyrics and a melody to make a song. So, um, a lot of my poems start with a melody idea in my head or I sit down and I'm concentrating on something and some words will come to me. And so over the years I've written many poems, short stories. So I, I put a book together called Choice because in my life, my life journey of being up and down or good or bad, it's been based a lot on my choices that I chose to uh, participate and explore in and out of the box. Uh, on this planet in the years I've been here. And the book is called Choices in Mind Time. It's a, it's a, it's a, a play on words. Mind. M-I-N-D. The choices we make in our head to be ourselves and choose life patterns and journeys. And the choices uh, uh, that are mind, M-I-N-D, that we decide in that life journey that we need to give ourselves gifts that we want to allow. And, uh, Go do things that are make us happy. Sometimes it's just getting on a horse by ourselves and riding or, or sailing or going fishing. Uh, sitting down and listening to a while of some good music. Uh, so, in that book, there's a poem that is, I wrote a, a time ago, I'm in the studio right now recording. And it's called Through the Eyes of Children. And uh, I'd be honored to share and leave this message in the minds of uh, everyone that gets to hear this, this radio program today. And hope that, uh, you know, when it goes out, you will share it around the world, because it's a concept. Um, I think we all love children. A lot of us have children. We see children play, they seem to get along with everything and everybody. So I based that uh, conversation in this poem through the eyes of children about how mankind needs to look at each other worldwide. So if you would like, and give me a minute, I'd like to read it. We would love that. That would be awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much. This is called Through the Eyes of Children. Through the eyes of children, we can see the world, the waves, for you and I. Through the eyes of children, we could learn to live together in peace and harmony. Don't you think we need some new ways of looking at the way we are getting things done? Don't you think in the ways we are getting things done, we need new ways to look at them. Do you think if we look at our problems through the eyes of children, the way we see life in each other, we change things for the good of us all? God said, innocence lives in the children. Blessed are the children. So let you and I play children for a while. Children have a way of getting along with everything and everybody. Maybe through the eyes of children, we can see the ways to joy is living, is through peace and love. Don't you think it's worth a try to look at our world, our lives, you and I, through the eyes of children? Maybe 
through the eyes of children. We will see a better way of being human beings, a better way to be ourselves. Maybe through the eyes of children, we will start to look at life, each other, through the eyes of peace, through the eyes of love, through the eyes of children. That's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And it's so true because kids will be friends with anyone. They don't think, oh, you're this color or that color, or you're a boy or you're a girl. They'll just play and, you know, they see the goodness in someone and that is what's important and they'll just be friends. So that is a beautiful poem. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for allowing me to share. Well, your message is important. Yep. It's in Canada, horsemen and all. You have a great country. And I have enjoyed your welcoming there and visiting you. And I hope that the work that uh, Yenny is doing with Blue Sky Radio and many of the people that I know there, there are many there. And uh, uh, I would like to mention their names, but that will take some time. But you know who you are. And I look forward to coming back. I really, uh, we are entering some film festivals in Canada. I hope that'll bring us there. And I'm looking forward to coming there and doing some work through the music. I would love to tour Canada again. So uh, uh, anytime that you can uh, uh, hear that I'm there to support children and horses, I hope you will join me at Blue Sky Radio and Yenny and, and uh, Cat Bates. And uh, oh my goodness, there's so many. Christine Gallant. Christine <laughs> Gallant. I, I mean, I mean, it's, it's just uh, John Tennant. Uh, of course, again, Ken uh, McLeod and his wife Judith from uh, the Canadian Free Press. I mean, there's just, and of course, uh, a man I respect very highly who really brought me back to Canada, which is Albert Boulder and his family and the Pet Channel. I, I, I have very much enjoyed your country, and I look forward to uh, taking a journey back there. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully we'll see you soon, definitely. Um, do you have any parting words that you would like to leave us with before we say goodbye for today? I, I guess uh, just the, the last part of the poem I just read, I'd like to say again. As we look at ourselves and we look at being a human being with the responsibility to raise better thinking minds than are here on this planet today, the future of mankind are the children. So we need to bring them up. Their indoctrination and the way they think are based on family structure, what they're taught from their mothers and their fathers. So I think that if we want to see a better world, maybe we better be better sensei, better teachers, and teach better philosophy and ways of thinking about we and us, not you and I. I want to leave you with this last part of this poem, Do the Eyes of Children. Maybe, through the eyes of children, we will start to look at life and each other. Do eyes of peace. Do eyes of love. Do the eyes of children. Thank you so much. We need those messages. Those are healing messages and something that we need to bring forward with us gives us hope. And, and along with that, I would simply like to say the thing that has kept me strong in my life is my faith and belief in the great spirit, God. Some of us do believe in that and some of us don't. So uh, keep your faith strong and keep believing in the spirit and the good in mankind. And I think we'll overcome the hate, the prejudice, and uh, the destruction of mankind. It is least worth thinking that way. Maybe we can do it. Mm -hmm. Well, you thank don't you. Don't forget the horse. Don't forget the horse. That's definitely you. You see, the horse is brought up a little bit more. Pardon? <laughs> I say, please don't forget the horse. Don't forget the horse, of course. That's really what brought us all together here. That's the uh, very center of this radio show. Uh, came from my love of horses and. Cac Betts is somebody who has always been there supporting me and uh, making sure that, you know, that I keep going as well. So there's so many people to say thank you to. Thank you to Canadian Wild Horses and 
Thank you to everyone. So thank you so much, Jar. Uh, we are actually going to play your song, uh, Horse, uh, not here on Facebook Live, but it will go out on RadioWaterloo.ca and here locally in Kitchener. So um, I guess with that, we'll, we'll say goodbye for today. Thank you so much for speaking with me here today. And uh, Well, let me, let, me, let me just end with, uh, since you may have a second. Okay. You're going to play the song, Horse. Yeah. For many years, I've been involved with the horse since the age of three to 76. I finally have met enough horse people that told me their story on why they love the horse. And so I sat down and made that a, on my last album, which was I Ride Horses, Horse. And it is what I feel about the horse. And everyone I've talked about that really sincerely love horses that I've shared that song with today, thank you for writing it. I hope it will become the anthem for the horse so that we can make it a hit like some of the songs out there were about so many other things, uh, you know, about love and, and hate and war. But we can have a song out there that says, the horse for me is a soulmate and it's taken me from nowhere to everywhere. I love that. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. We'll talk to you soon again. Uh, have a really great rest of your day and uh, God bless you. Peace and love, Canada. Peace God bless you. God bless Blue Sky Radio and you get it. Thank you. Bye, Jar. Ciao. Ciao. So we are going to play the song Horse. I'm ending the Facebook Live. Anybody that's listening, you can find the show at RadioWaterloo.ca. Also, if you live in Kitchener and Waterloo here in southwestern Ontario, Canada, you can find us at 102.7 FM. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening to the show.